from the potential of diversity facing uh, uh, robotization, automation, social inequalities, can employers afford not to be open to the potential involving all the talents? Should company consciously quit such uh, uh, wealth? Well, I leave the question also to my co-panelist, but this is good to see from purely business perspective. Can the companies abort this great potential? Well, diversity health potential. We work with a broad range of companies from Poland, from abroad, also from various sectors. I would say that without a shadow of a doubt, there are many, many benefits for the business resulting from diversity. Managing diversity, but I'll keep talking about inclusion. Diversity is one thing, inclusion is another thing. So we have a lot of research at hand that shows and combines directly diversity management and creating open culture with employees' performance. That is proven by McKinsey's, Gallup's or Deloitte's research. But our experience gives a bit cast different light. We can, we can list a relation between increased creativity openness to innovations, better flexibility of companies. There are multiple benefits. There are also uh, um, image benefits or losses if you do not run diversity and inclusion operations. But we need to remember that the processes are strategic and they should be much linked to business and business strategy of each company. This is essential and that also shows that is proven by our experience. When we look at the cross section of the market, we will find companies which due to various reasons will fear investing in diversity because they are connected or somehow dependent on political decisions by licenses or permits, or they have a business strategy to address the operations to more conservative groups or different sectors of customers, then indeed they would question, well, true, how does business calculate whether a group is worth supporting? I believe there are safe groups like the elderly uh, acting for, in favor of uh, women's rights, where support of those is always a good form of PR. But in Poland, when we think of supporting sexual or, th or ethnic minorities could be more risky for a company. Are such calculations pending? I'd actually like to come back to the previous question, which was about uh, if it makes business sense. And I think starting just from the values perspective, it makes, of course, complete sense. And then it also, from a business perspective, makes complete sense, because just like um, you were sharing before, uh, the world is changing very rapidly. We have digitization, we have innovation changing the complete retail landscape. And as such, for IKEA, we see that diversity is not a choice. It's a business necessity uh, for us to, to develop. And then I think what is important is that we try to look at it from three different angles. The first one being, let's say, the co-worker perspective, that, um, that if we can have a, div a diverse and inclusive uh, workplace, we can see that people are feeling much more appreciated, they perform better. It means that we can attract and we can retain talent. And then from a pure teams perspective, uh, if we have diverse teams, like you were saying, we will approach complex problems in completely different ways with different experiences, different um, uh, ways of solving problems, which means that we are taking better decision and we're being more creative. And then also from a pure customer perspective, where customers today, they expect brands to be trustful and to take a stand. So. 
And also, I think what is very crucial for an international company uh, like IKEA is that we need to represent the diverse uh, community where we are operating. So I think the business case is very strong, but also uh, the human case is even stronger. Well, as Karin uh, uh, has uh, the, the floor, uh, IKEA, two years ago, everybody heard about a situation in one of your stores in Krakow. A person was fired who spread homophobic entries on the company intranet. He said it was not homophobic, this is a Bible quotation, but that way he threatened with death. The company fired him. There was a storm of the right-wing parties. Last year, the Warsaw uh, Prosecutor's Office charged the uh, uh, manager for breaching employees' law rights. So, what is your situation now in Poland? Are you stronger or are you weaker? Because you started to uh, market rainbow bags, and so you counterattacked somehow. Yes. Um Sorry, I have to turn off the volume when I'm speaking. <laughs> no, I think um, this case from Krakow is an ongoing investigation, and as such, we cannot uh, comment upon it. And when it comes to the rainbow bags, it has, uh, or the Storstoma bag, as we call it, it has uh, nothing to do that is being introduced, let's say, after. Uh, this is part of our equality, diversity, and inclusion strategy. It's a bag uh, that is sold um, across the many, many markets. And it is also um, a symbol of respect uh, for the LGBT plus community and a symbol of uh, openness. And um, I think it has, uh, apart from, of course, a beautiful message, it also comes with that all the profits uh, from these bags uh, goes to this Empowering Children Foundation. And um, this is, um, they are running this helpline so that teenagers and children can call. They're receiving, uh, I think, a call every second minute with uh, young children, teenagers, uh, that need to talk about the situation that they're in. And it can be often about non-acceptance. Um, so I think the profits from this bag um, can support up to 10,000 calls from uh, children and, and young teenagers. So that's what's about the bag. But of course, uh, coming back to, let's say, um, LGBT+, I, I just want to state that um, equality is a human right. Uh, and as such, uh, we support our LGBT plus co-workers to be themselves, they have equal opportunities. And uh, I think this is basically coming back to just human rights. And as I shared before, um, this is, uh, of course, uh, just making a human case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has the situation, doesn't that situation somehow paradoxically show that in Poland companies have some restrictions in protecting their staff against discrimination even from other staff? Karin, would you like to continue or shall we transfer the floor to someone else? Sorry, I only caught the second part of the question since the volume was off, sorry. I'm wondering if the companies do, are not restricted somehow due to such a situation as your company has suffered in protecting the rights of your employees against discrimination. Or your stance is whenever you need, you will always protect those values without looking to any external factors. No, I, we're standing up for our values and we're standing up for who we are. Um, we have a vision which was founded long, long time ago when IKEA was founded, and that is to create a better everyday life for the many people. Uh, we are recruiting colleagues uh, and co-workers based on values first. And uh, this is what we call the forever parts of our company. Um, and this is how we recruit and this is how we also uh, do our business. And I think that in these topics also we need to take a strategic and, and long-term approach. We have a three-year um, equality, diversity and inclusion plan. 
where we are working with um, uh, other areas as well. We are working with gender, we are working with uh, age, we are working with nationalities, with disabilities, and with sexual orientation. So of course, it's a much wider agenda. And I think when it comes to gender, we have done um, a fantastic work already. Uh, for example, we have 6,000 employees in Poland, half are women. And of course, as such, we need to make sure that we have gender equality, both at the workplace, but also at home. We have now achieved that we have uh, gender balance 50-50 in management and, and all we, on all levels. And also we have reduced the pay gap to, to less than 1%. But even in this area, I think there's lots more to be done because I think also what we talked about, what the pandemic has showed us is that equality really starts at home. Uh, we can't really get equality in the workplace or in society without true gender equality at home. Uh, and this means, of course, that um, we need to also balance, let's say, the parenting, the childcare. So we have also introduced uh, one month of uh, fully paid paternal leave. Um, and so far, uh, we have uh, almost 150 uh, fathers uh, taking this. And I think this is really important to to do in order to really reach, uh, for example, a true gender equality. Anna, question to you. We know that diversity can be an asset for the company. It can translate to even better benefit income. But what should you do when differences within a team, your staff, are so great, well, they cannot be Satisfied. So can it be that the ideological differences can be so huge, like in the case of the fired employee, then nothing can be done. He needs to be got rid of. Should such issues be solved during recruitment so that we know who is qualified for the job? Or should Pavel, your question has so many aspects. That was a stream of conscious, sorry. So let me tell you, firstly, if we talk about diversity, the diversity itself, that is the presence of people who represent various attitudes, various cultures, with various sexes, they can have different uh, physical abilities, they can be of different age, whatever. Yesterday, during a panel with uh, Harari and Deval, we talked, we could listen to how small differences can uh, split us. How can we divide about small things? Deval said people hate most those who are most alike. There was that, there were experiments, green and blue, Pan can be the basis to cause antagonisms in a group. But that's not the point. The point is that diversity understood through statistics will always evoke conflict because operating in a diverse team moves us out of our sphere of comfort, comfort zone. We need to break our own restrictions. We can, we have the right to feel uneasy that we have our pre-assumptions, attitudes, prejudice, because that's the way we are built. If something is different than us, something is new, will for us be something dangerous, something inconvenient. It pushes us out of the comfort zone. I hate the words, but yes. So diversity is one thing, and as such, it can cause, and often does, problems in communication. We're fritting the common uh, uh, top, uh, topic, smaller, larger conflicts. You ask about a golden means. Well, this is the area where we talk about inclusion and then opening the labor environment that will make each person, regardless of their features, can bring into the company their potential and fulfill it without any restrictions. If 
we, we do not focus on differences, and but on the th features that join us. It much depends on the environment, organization, institutional settings built by the company, but also on the attitude of the managers who control the team. If they can build such an environment within the team that would group and focus the team on the goal, on our objective, and on the reason we are in an organization, at that moment, who is like what doesn't matter. When you decide on the diverse working environment, you need to build it because only then the differences and responding to different needs will make people want to come to work. Only then can we talk about, uh, about that list of benefits from the beginning. Isn't it so that a company needs to have its own clear external image to attract proper people who will bring the additional value rather than being the source of future conflict. Well, we don't have to, but if a company does it to the outside, they have a better potential to attract diverse talents. I would also like to say about one more aspect. I, I don't want to take too much time here that companies that are not prepared to manage diversity will lose on diversity, will not be able to benefit from it. What is needed is the construction of conditions for that. Only then will we have the potential to cope with possible conflicts or difficulties that diversity of employees may bring. A question comes to Miłosz. Is it so that business shows tendencies to support minorities, defavored groups when consumers want it? Have you come across in your forum of responsible business that it was the business who set the guidelines? Speaking about openness of companies, uh, us, uh, the forum of responsible business, as the coordinator, underscores the fact that it is not only about the companies realizing that they are diverse organizations. Diversity remains a fact. A fact's a fact. Come on. But as the lady speakers were saying, you need to manage diversity in a strategic way. If a company wants to gain any goods, referring to employees, financial gains, image, open organization image, it's all about it being strategic. Uh, well, it should start by thinking, what is the organization like? What is the company like? How the company supports its employees on day-to-day -day basis, employees of both sexes, and only then can we think of how we communicate with external stakeholders. I want to evade from your question for a moment. Karin was speaking about very interesting thing. We speak about diversity and care. Rarely have we spoke about diversity and inclusion. In our business forum, we had the big survey on the caring roles. When you take care of somebody else, especially adults, it's not present in the workplace. Pandemics showed the problems of workplace, sharing between parents, sharing work between parents, especially in crisis. Returning to your question, I'd say that business kind of had a difficult examination when it comes to diversity management. Caring roles are also on the agenda, are a very important element of uh, diversity management politics. Business in Poland shows that it is a very important actor in Poland, which is in line with young consumers' expectations. Not only business can, but also has the role to change the world. This is the business that young consumers uh, trust. But the check time will be soon. 
before any decision is made uh, about external involvement, the company should realize what is internally. So they do they trust more than their own governments? In a forum of responsible business, we also work on this business to be an informed user of the knowledge generated in the world. And in our thematic analysis, we attracted attention to the fact that the brands are more, are more trusted by consumers than they trust the government's states. So this is a great chance for business to show that the trust attached by consumers can be used for more inclusive societies. And business is starting to respond to the expectations and challenges to support different social movements, communicate its involvement, promote the themes, topics associated with diversity. If we were brought together in this debate in a few years' time, we could have a flashback asking whether it was worth for business to be inclusive. We live in turbulent times, so there'll be lots of occasions for the companies to involve in an open way. Bouncing back from that, it goes to MP Monica Rossa. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. The situation we are in. The government shows the negative attitude to minorities and others. Should business set new standards for the society? Hello and welcome. In Katowice, we're about to see the end of the Equality March. The government is one of the most extreme, homophobic, nationalistic, anti-minority governments. So every player, every element of social, business, economic, social life bears the responsibility to promote diversity and inclusiveness and human rights. We are living in difficult times. Anytime a brand in Poland puts a rainbow on social media, there is an avalanche of comments from the social media saying, ain't gonna buy that anymore, ain't gonna do that anymore, it's a sick ideology. So on the one hand side, I do appreciate the courage of the brands. On the other hand, we need to do, expect more. It's not posting a picture, printing out a t-shirt, sponsoring production of a t-shirt with a symbol for a minority. It should be done. Uh, isn't there a risk of appropriation of symbols for the sake of financial gains? Let's agree that some clients, some consumers, some environments find the rainbow or the thunder of women's strike might drive them away. And there is a great many consumers that attract them. I remember the confectionery in Warsaw where they had muffins with this thunder and everybody was wondering whether it was a true involvement of political marketing. Where is the division line? Madame MP, how about this? Lots of doubts. So what is important is to see whether it is seeming or actual inclusive. It's excellent that somebody has put the flag out but will we have another step? Will we have real and feasible implementation of diversity politics in our companies? LGBT discrimination. Also, people with disabilities, caretakers. It's a fact. It's not my role to give you a lesson, but it's my role to 
encourage you for the openness, inclusive policy to realize it, not to keep it at the minimum level, to see the depth of the problems of the people who are the minority or who deal with minorities. Like Ukrainians taking away jobs from Poles. We have no, we have unemployment, though we don't have a problem with unemployment as such, but we have lots of opinions of this kind. Very hatred driven comments, man woman roles division, the payment gap, and the fact that ladies earmark more time for home care, home chores care for children and people with disabilities care and others. So if there is anything I want to have them real, not seeming activities, I'd like to make a comment. Thank you very much for airing out this opinion. I'd like to make a comment. We are in the country, we run business in a country where public administration does not support company in taking care of diversity. Without speaking about political issues, if we talk to decision makers, could make the most important strategic decisions about activities to involve in something that the state should be involved in, here comes the question, are we supposed to do so that and we should pay kudos to many company companies who have this kind of humanitarian human management stand. What Karen was speaking about IKEA IKEA is not, luckily enough, an exception. There are companies we work with that have different companies with different attitudes, but being genuine is the key to success. Madame Rosa was speaking about it. Not to gild a lily, but to be authentic. In addition to political decisions, business decisions, strategic decisions, where we calculate KPIs, whether it is worth to invest in diversity or not, they say it's human case. These people have values. They make decisions in business. They say, you need to do it. This is the last argument on the list of arguments of business advantages or business cases. At the end of the day, there is saying because this is the right thing to do. Any of you commenting to give a conclusion before we give the floor to the public? Can, how can business support diversity? What are the best ways? Speaking about what was said here, business is people and business becomes more and more informed. When we look at the world reports, we can see the need to redefine the system. So neoliberal pace has gone away in the strategy. So I hope that the business becomes more and more responsible will set on strategic management. Business needs to listen to consumers' voice, but it should be translated from declarations to re act real acting. I'd like to agree, but I think that this is really important that when it comes to, to businesses, the businesses really put uh, diversity and inclusion very closely linked to the values. And then, of course, also to have a, a long-term view on it. And then maybe just one final remark. I think that um, in a large company, I think we need to remind ourselves also that 
This is everyone's responsibility. It's not the managers, it's not the leaders. This is really something that needs to be embedded completely into the culture, that this is every co-worker's responsibility to make uh, the workplace inclusive. Mm, thank you. I'd like to answer the last question. How can we do it? There are lots of perspectives in the last one. The most important one that I see that gives me the most value it is the companies. This is the workplace that we are brought together and meet people who differ from us. It happens more often than not and only then uh, we meet diversity. It's a macro scale investment into diversity, what can we change? What kind of social change can it trigger? This is education, impact on people, not direct through trainings or orienteering sessions, but learning by doing, by experiencing. We are brought together. We work with people who are different from us something that may be foreign to us is not an impediment. Therefore, we've got a great area to verify theory, stereotypes, attitudes, our own limitations that we have in us and model them in an efficient way. So inclusive, investing, human respecting milliers in an authentic way. We are different people so we might have reservations, but this company will change us. There are many ways business can impact social change. Inclusion of excluded groups or support for groups that are in danger of exclusion. This is the closest to my heart. Any comments to finish that off uh, from NMP, how business can support inclusiveness? Yeah, if you're a politician, you can offer uh, good advice, but I won't do it. One thing I can say, it will always be recognized, this diversity support internally, externally will be recognized and it will translate uh, for support for the whole society and business at the end of the day. We know what kind of conditions we are in. What are the consequences for non-international companies uh, can be brought about by support for diversity. One of the most important things that I want to touch about is inclusion of people with uh, disabilities. Poland comes at the end of the ranking. I know this is the question of the state and support system for such people. It's insufficient, to put it mildly, but let's think how many people with disabilities may use this support in real terms, not only at home, but not only over the phone or teleworking, but feasible use of this support, a great challenge for all of us and each of us. Thank you very much. We have quite a Time for discussion. Here comes the mic. Jasio Pieszukiewicz. I am from Lewica Razem, left wing together, but I'm also an entrepreneur. I'd like to say one thing, another comment, and then ask. I'm also a university a lecturer. I have something to say. The diversity is supported by business. Not business is supposed to support diversity. In all teams I have worked with, uh, all the researches, research projects, my business is culture related, wherever I built a team that was diverse in any possible aspect the team was more creative, more, more tending to compromise, easier to work with, less 
conflict regarding the cock size. And uh, that, that's my thought, food for thought for you. Read some research. Diversity supports business. It's for, for your own benefit that teams are diverse. Of course, when building a team, you need to be cautious. And I have my rule of 5% of diversity. You can't have the team that is totally different within. There must be a, a thread of common understanding between them. It, it's not that they have just 5% different. They all need to have uh, their own differences, but not too much. Then people will not talk to each other. Projects will collapse. So in the line of building the team, you need to have a strategy, well-developed strategy, who cooperates with whom, what's direct relations, what is subordination. This is something you can learn if you run business for a couple of years. And that would be, I don't know if I have a question actually. I wanted to ask about social companies. Have you heard about this formula? Yes, of course. This is a topic for a separate session. Anybody who would like to address social company? It's, it's present in business literature. The business literature about how diversity contributes to better financial output are numerous. And on our port portal, we also suggest such readings to the business, and we see they draw conclusions. That is positive. Also, if we look at the ESG, that is various indicators regarding social issues, we note that business has a lesson to do. And further to, to your words, you are an example of what we discussed. I don't know if you were late. I see, that's the point. We are not talking about out of the blue ideas. You have a true man talking that he has gone through what we discussed. I, I didn't say that, but there is a phenomenon named diversity overkill. That's in organizations that are not ready for that. And all of a the sudden, uh, they implement such processes too quickly. And the awareness of people in the organization or their market is far away. So it's is done either too hastily or we are not simply ready for that. People do not feel the responsibility and the company doesn't support. That is how uh, research, well, there is research on the topic and we often encourage this diversity overkill. Ladies to comment on next question. No, okay, let's move to the next question, please. Kubabilski. I would have the question to you because the gentleman from the uh, Businessman Forum said the business enjoys trust among youngsters so they can impact their views, ideas, or whatever is the topic of this meeting. My question is, do you think that business holds a mandate to affect moral values of the society? If yes, where is it from? I, I do not say, well, it's a fundamental question. Where does this mandate for the business? Making money or other moral issues? That's a good question. Thank you. The mandate and the expectations I talked about, especially for young uh, uh, consumers, involves some kind of resignation regarding 
changes in the truly political sphere for young consumers, polit politics, business, economy, it all overlaps. They believe, as Karin said, the business should take the matters into their own hands and not impose what's beneficial for the business, but the mandate is granted by the consumers. That is the responsibility of companies. The potential, the scope, the most popular brands enjoy on daily basis should be used for the good cause. And also that involves caring for the staff, paying taxes, then you can think how to contribute to the repair of the world. I fully agree. I believe that we all have the same mandate in society to talk about the values, but the business values are the emanations of the cons consumers and employees' values. It's not imposed. The business may impose prices, but not values. You can see evolution of companies. Companies reached the level of manifesting their values. So I believe the direction is quite to the reverse. What I see now in the market is that companies have become a medium and they take over that responsibility. Otherwise, the state should carry to support uh, citizens' uh, society, to support such topics as diversity, inclusion, democracy, the issues that are now neglected by the state. And that comes from the uh, growing need among the people, among society. Karin, what will you tell us? Karin, a word of comment. Yeah. I, no, I fully agree with what already has been uh, said. And I think, um, again, coming back to, let's say, a, a business vision, I don't think that, um, coming back to IKEA's business vision, it is that we, uh, we want to create a better everyday life for the many people. It's about creating a better everyday life. It's not about selling X amount of Billy bookcases. And I think that it, it really comes back to that. And I think that is the importance of being a purposeful brand. And also our experience and also what is built into our long-term strategy about being people and planet positive is also about being fair, being equal, and having a positive impact in the communities. And I think that that is really an important work that we have and are doing. Mm. One final question from someone else, unless nobody else wants. There is a person at the back. Anna Heliska, I would have a question. Activation of certain groups. I'm lucky enough to work for a corpo that is much involved in supporting diversity, etc., etc. These are the goals that are so close to us. However, I know that from my perspective, for instance, we are very open to disabled people, but they won't apply. So what can business do to activate certain social groups? Sh should business play that role? Partnership with NGOs, for instance, is the answer. Yes, yes. It is great art to build such a vision of an organization that would attract by itself, especially minority groups or uh, groups threatened with exclusion. Disabled people, we can see that companies who take these actions cannot do it without NGOs who specialize in vocational activation of people from that group. However, this is not the fault of uh, the disabled people or wrong means that uh, you, you take, but it's rather the issue of deeper structural problem, how disabled people are included into the labor market, how they are included into the social life. We see more barriers on the other side. That's why 
we cooperate so closely with NGOs and it works. And I know instances where companies succeeded, I wouldn't say enormous, but it, it was far better. If I could, the issue of activating disabled people and their carers is a structural, political and social problems, but giving them a hand, working with specialist organizations, we, the politicians, have much larger responsibility. If only activation is possible, we will do it, but giving the hand, working with organizations that are there on the market, that is something that can help one, two, fifty, hundred people to find jobs. Yes, but not, not against you, but life example, my life. I'm wearing a plaster on my leg. I was waiting for the moment. I knew it would come. It's the second floor of this beautiful building that was revitalized several years ago only, and it's absolutely not adapted to people with mobility issues. That I experienced that myself today. Hardly ever can we be aware of it without such a plaster, for instance. I could see a couple of people uh, on wheelchairs. I don't think they could get here. Well, they were brought in here, okay. So we need to take also that into consideration as an additional obstacle, barrier. We need to arrange workspace that is expensive. And that is a physical, economic and mental barrier for decision makers. And uh, I can see that it's always often a group you, you address at the very, very end. That's true. And I can experience that. Let's be real and request accessibility. Thank you very much. A round of applause for the panelists. Enjoy the evening. Thank you.
Good afternoon, Aga. Good afternoon, Antonios. Very pleased to, see, to see, you. see you. I'm ready, so we'll. I only talk see Anna here. I don't know if she can.